We are beyond halfway through 2021, closing in on August, which means we got to talk about the Nintendo Switch games coming out in the month of August. I've selected 15 games to talk about, yes, 15, and while some of these games might not be household names or games I'm even necessarily interested in, it's not about me, it's about you, the viewer, and what your tastes are. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, welcome, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on videos like this, but without any further ado, let's talk about 15 games coming to the Nintendo Switch in the month of August 2021. On August 3rd, we have a game called Dragon Star Venar coming out. Now in this game, you play as a knight named Zephy who is tasked with taking down witches, but he's actually mauled by a dragon, and two witches end up saving his life by giving him dragon blood, which has witch properties in it. Now the three of them set out to take on dragon hunters and an overall big evil witch. The game is interesting in that it's a turn-based JRPG game, but with a bit of a twist with the battle system. It utilizes a three-tier height system when you're battling. So basically you sort of go up and down on these different tiers to do different damages to different enemies. The game looks nice enough and has an anime art style, and exclusive to the Nintendo Switch version of the game are additional weapons, armor, and level caps that were previously only available for purchase on other platforms. And now these are free. Dragon Star Varner comes out on August 3rd, and while this might not be a JRPG I end up checking out, maybe you will. Also on August 3rd we have a game called In Sound Mind. Now this is a first person psychological horror game that is coming to us from the people behind Nightmare House 2. And this seems like an important thing to know because they keep saying that these are the people behind Nightmare House 2, but honestly I've never heard of that game. You basically play as a character who is subjected to experimental therapy and now his brain is all messed up. And you traverse the world solving puzzles, battling monsters, trying to keep your sanity in check, all with a cat named Tanya at your side. Now I'm not too big on cats as I do have allergies, but it is nice for the cat lovers out there. Honestly, the game looks interesting enough and the game is broken up into several different stories and it looks pretty creepy overall. In Sound Mind comes out on the Nintendo Switch on August 3rd and it's not Halloween time, but why not get some scares? Before we get into the next game for the month of August on the Nintendo Switch, I want to give a huge thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. What is Surfshark VPN? I'm glad you asked. I've said it before and I'll say it again, RGT wants you to be protected when you're surfing the internet, and Surfshark VPN was kind enough to sponsor today's video and they will give you that protection. Surfshark VPN is a fast and easy to use VPN service that you can use on a variety of devices. I have it on my PC right here, I simply just click a button and bam, now I'm protected online. Aside from just protecting your data online, Surfshark VPN also allows you to access things like Netflix and Hulu from other regions to get more content, plus tons more of additional features. And right now, by using the link in the description box down below in the code RGT, you can get Surfshark VPN at an 83% discount, which is the cheapest you can get it anywhere. Plus, you get three extra months for free. One membership allows you to hook up all your devices to your account, whether it's a cell phone, a desktop, a laptop, or even your Xbox or PlayStation console. So protect yourself with Surfshark VPN. Check out the link in the description box down below, and huge thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Originally an Xbox exclusive, the Falconeer Warrior Edition is now coming to the Nintendo Switch on August 5th. You play as Falconeer, who is equipped with the Lightning Caster, and basically you're trying to take down various types of enemies while trying to solve the mystery of the world known as Ursi. When looking at the game, I definitely get some Panzer Dragoon and even a little bit of Star Fox vibes from it, and that's honestly what's making the game pretty attractive to me. You encounter a bunch of different areas and different enemy types, including some underwater segments, and the combat seems to be pretty fast and fluid. They managed to get the Nintendo Switch version of the game running at 60 frames per second, even in handheld mode too, which is pretty impressive. The Nintendo Switch version of the game is fully updated. It features the Hunter DLC and new Edge of the World DLC included in it as well, which has three additional side quests and new boss encounters. It honestly seems like this game has a good bit of content, and as long as the game is fun, which it looks like it might be, this could end up being a hidden gem on the Nintendo Switch, and it's also getting a physical release as well. The Falconeer Warrior Edition soars onto your Nintendo Switch on August 5th. The combo of sports games and RPG seems to be becoming more and more of a thing, I guess, and the latest one is Dodgeball Academia, which releases on August 5th. 
In a world where dodgeball is life, you join Auto at the Academy and train to become the ultimate dodgeball champion. Across eight episodes, you'll forge friendships, create rivalries, all in the name of developing the best dodgeball team. The gameplay looks pretty similar to Super Dodgeball, but obviously this being an RPG game, there's a full story, there's side quests, there's exploration, unlockable characters, and much, much more. Walk around campus, meet new people, upgrade your characters, and take it to the dodgeball court to become the greatest dodgeball player ever. I honestly think this game looks pretty cool, and there's even some local multiplayer in it as well, and you can battle it out on the court. Dodgeball Academia hits the Nintendo Switch on August 5th. Ever Forward is a game that I will never play, but I know some of you will be interested in this game when it releases on August 10th. It's kind of what I like to call an artsy fartsy style game, and there's nothing wrong with that, it's just a genre that I've never really been able to get into. Ever Forward is a 3D puzzle platformer in which you play as a girl named Maya, who finds herself lost in a reality that exists somewhere between the real world and her imagination. You basically have to solve puzzles to unlock repressed memories she has in these weird environments that I'm assuming she's creating in her mind. It honestly looks like a solid game for fans of these style of games and it might be worth checking out on August 10th. Ever wanted to ride a skateboard but you can't because you're a bird? Well Skatebird is breaking down societal norms and barriers when it releases on August 12th. You play as a bird and you skateboard. I mean, do you really need to know anything else to convince you as to why you should play this game? You grind on bendy straws and pencils, you utilize your terrain to do tricks, beat level challenges, unlock new birds and new gear, it's probably going to be very Tony Hawk-like in the classic Tony Hawk sense, but I mean, that's not a bad thing at all. The more you skate, the more following you get, the more world of bird skating will open up and birds will give you other locations to check out as well. If you are a bird and you are tired of society looking down on you for wanting to skateboard, Skatebird is your escape on August 12th. Four Close comes out on August 12th as well and has some serious hidden gem vibes to it. You play as a character named Eben Kompnos. His identity recently foreclosed, he was stripped of his job, brain implants, and access to the city called Blockchain. He now must escape the city before his identity and implants are auctioned off. Now, as you can tell, it's a very cyberpunk-esque game, but what's cool about it is the presentation is done in a comic book style that looks really sharp. And it's not an interactive movie type game or anything like that either, as you're constantly trying to get augments to improve Evan and his weapons, so there's like an RPG system to it as well. The combat looks pretty good, the world looks interesting enough, and this could be a really fun game to check out on August 12th. Do you like dogs? Do you like dogs that have human jobs? Do you want to save the world? Well, check out Paw Patrol, the movie Adventure City Calls on August 13th, or die. Now, I know I said that artsy fartsy games aren't my style, and upon first glance, Road 96, which comes out on August 16th, does have an artsy fartsy style to it, but the gameplay sounds so compelling that I'm making an exception for this. It's 1996, you are hitchhiking to get out of the authoritarian nation of Petria and find your freedom. You encounter a bunch of different characters on your hitchhiking adventures, all with their own backstories, and you end up with a ton of different gameplay elements because of this. The game is procedurally generated too, with thousands of rows, meaning that you can play through the game in a variety of different ways because you're going to end up going somewhere different with someone different on a different path. I'm absolutely fascinated by this concept, and I think if it's well done and works as it's intended, this game could be seriously awesome. The visual style of the game looks nice too, and it says that there's a variety of 90s tunes that you hear in the game as well, so I'm curious to see what bands and artists they got. Honestly, I'm really looking forward to playing Road 96 when it comes out on August 16th. I just hope it turns out well. If you like Streets of Rage 4, which you should have because it was awesome, then Mayhem Brawler should be a game on your radar when it comes out on August 19th. The game looks like a concept out of a 90s kid's imagination when making a beat em up game, where you play as one of three different characters, Dolphin, Star, and Trouble. Basically you kick people's asses, but not just street thugs you are dealing with because there's like dinosaur looking thugs in the game too, so obviously it has a more fantasy approach to it. The cool thing about this game is that there are branching paths which leads you to different levels, and there's three different endings as well, so there will be some good replay value in this game. Beat em ups are back, and Mayhem Brawler might be the next must play one when it comes out on August 19th. 
Rims Racing is coming out on August 19th, and I will be honest with you guys, I absolutely hate the way that the title is stylized. The I in rims is the only lowercase letter, with everything else being uppercase, and I, I don't understand why. Am I supposed to say the name different because of this? Anyways, it's a realistic motorcycle racing game which features real bikes in real locations. It's a simulation style game with customizable parts that will greatly impact your bike, realistic physics, and so on. Now honestly, I could barely ride a normal bicycle, so motorbike racing ain't for me, but if it's for you, RIMS Racing, all capital except for one eye, will be there for you on August 19th. I'm currently looking at buying a house or a townhouse, so when I see HOA, I think of Homeowners Association and the fees tied in with that, but HOA is actually a 2D platformer coming to the Nintendo Switch on August 24th. This game looks like a rather peaceful platformer with a hand-painted art style that kind of reminds me a bit of a boy and his blob on the Nintendo Wii. You play as Hoa, you explore the world, encounter new friends and enemies as well. I really don't have much else to say about this game, but if you like what you see, it might be worth checking out Hoa on August 24th. This game feels like it was announced forever ago for the Nintendo Switch, but King's Bounty 2 is finally coming out on August 24th. An interesting combination of different gameplay types. King's Bounty 2 has you choosing from one of three characters at the start of the game, each with their own abilities and personal stories as you set out into the world of Antera. The exploration part of the game looks to be like a behind the back third person perspective, kind of similar to Elder Scrolls if you choose that camera, but the combat in the game is actually a tactical grid based strategy RPG, which makes this game very different from others that are similar to it. Of course, since it's in medieval times, you encounter large beasts, warlords, and others on the battlefield. You customize and build your army to your liking in order to take out opposing characters with a ton of different upgrades that you can use as well. It's an interesting looking game, and I'll be curious to see how the Nintendo Switch version of this game performs, considering it is a multi-platform release. King's Bounty 2 will be available on August 24th, and all the King's horses and all the King's men are ready. Arguably the biggest game of the month is the Nintendo Switch exclusive, well, at least for now, No More Heroes 3 on August 27th. Travis Touchdown is back, and after the horrible Travis strikes again, I am definitely ready to cleanse my palate of that disgusting taste and get back into some classic No More Heroes gameplay. You fight through the galactic superhero rankings as the evil Prince F.U. has taken over Earth, and Travis Touchdown has to become number one. Travis, of course, has a bunch of different ways to take out his enemies via a beam katana, a death glove, wrestling moves, and even a mech suit. Now, in order to get your ranking up in order to challenge these other opponents, you have to do weird mini games to get that rank up. Some of the mini games are absolutely ridiculous in these games as well, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what they've included in this game. The graphical style of the game looks pretty decent, it looks pretty much like No More Heroes 1 and 2, and of course the writing and the setting of the game should be absolutely crazy, as this is a Suda51 game. Now I know what you're saying to yourself, did I reuse my notes on this game for my 2021 upcoming Switch games video? You're damn right I did! But No More Heroes 3 does look like a lot of fun, and will be on your Nintendo Switch on August 27th. What happens when you take the open world Grand Theft Auto format, but implement it into medieval times? You get a game called Rustler, which comes out on August 31st, and this game looks freaking awesome, man. Presentation wise, it's very similar to Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars with a top down perspective, but it's essentially an open world game where you're a character who, I guess he's essentially like a dickhead and he just does GTA style stuff. You steal a horse instead of a car. You hire a guy to follow you around to be your radio. You kill random people. It looks ridiculous and chaotic, and I want to play this game badly. Now, obviously, it's not a real representation of the world during those times, taking on more of a Bard's Tale style of humor, but I think that's going to work very well in this game's favor to make it just over the top and crazy. This is probably how I would have acted if I lived in medieval times, so Rustler to me is a must play when it comes out on the Nintendo Switch on August 31st. Alrighty, so those are 15 games coming to the Nintendo Switch in the month of August 2021. Like I said at the start, some of these games don't really interest me, but they might interest you. So I figured, you know what, let's just talk about a variety of games and maybe you'll find something you like. So let me know in the comments down below which games you're interested in for the month of August. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to like and share the video as well. A huge thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Make sure you guys go check them out. The link is in the description box down below and as always i'll catch you guys on the next one later